In this next lecture, I'm going to continue to talk about uh, Bayesian state space models. And in particular, I want to focus in on uh, this idea that there's nothing sacred in the state space framework about using you know, normal observation error and normal process error. And, and to illustrate uh, the, the flexibility of this framework and its ability to deal with very different types of error, I want to focus on a, a kind of an important class of, of problems, of, of, of models for modeling populations, which are, are capture recapture data. So if you're not familiar with capture recapture data, uh, this is usually used with um, animal populations. And the idea is that individuals are captured through some sort of often trapping mechanism. Um, they, you know, uh, they're then marked uh, and then they are released. And then as you continue to capture, you will eventually recapture uh, some individuals. You'll encounter some individuals that are, um, that you've observed previously, and you can identify them because you've marked them. Um, now, it's important to note that, that we're assuming that we recapture individuals randomly and, and that we don't capture them perfectly. So the, the recapture rate is less than 100%. Um, and, but what we're ultimately interested in is things like the population size and the population demography, such as the survival, growth, and reproduction of the population. Now that leads to a, an obvious problem is if, if, you, if, you, if you capture an individual and recapture it, you know that it's there, you know that it's still there. Um, and, and furthermore, you can infer that it was, the, you know, that it was alive in between the period uh, that you didn't capture it. Uh, but if you capture an individual and you don't capture it at the next time point, uh, there's two possibilities. You didn't capture it because uh, of this random recapture process, you weren't lucky enough to recapture it, or you didn't capture it because it wasn't there anymore. It, it, is, it perished or it, it emigrated and it left the population in some way. So let's look at that uh, in a little bit more detail. So suppose we have a, a record of captures. So the observed data is Y. Uh, we captured an individual at the first time point. We didn't capture it at the second time point. Uh, we captured it at the third, and then we didn't capture it in, at the fourth or the fifth. Uh, that uh, record of observations is compatible with multiple different uh, estimates of what the true state of the system. So here, Z uh, represents the latent state, uh, and there's three possible latent states. So, we, so if we observed an individual at time one and time three, we know for sure that that individual uh, was alive then. We're assuming there's no there's no zombie individuals that come back to life. Uh, if it was alive at one and three, it was alive at two. So so we have you know no uncertainty about states one, two, and three. Uh, but state four, uh, you know, it, the individual could have been dead zero, or it could have been alive. And, and if it was alive at time four, it could have been alive at time five, or it could have died between times four and five. Uh, so the problem is uh, we don't know the exact time of death because we have uh, this uh, convolution of survival and, uh, and, and recapture probability. And the question then is, well, first of all, how do we structure this model, but, but how is there information that allows us to separate uh, capture probability from, from survival? Is, is that even possible? And I'm going to argue it is specifically because um, we have records like this one where we didn't observe an individual and then we observed it again. So this, this data point here where we observed, we know the individual is alive, but we didn't observe it. You know, the frequency at which we see events like this is what allows us to ultimately come up with some estimate of the capture probability. Uh, and then, you know, no, you know, with, some estimate of the capture probability, it helps us infer uh, what the likelihood of mortality is in these times where we don't uh, recapture individuals. So let's look at what that would mean in terms of flushing out uh, both the process model and the, and the data model. 
So in, a, in the most basic form of a mark recapture state space model, uh, instead of having a normal process error and a normal observation error, we actually end up with a, a Bernoulli uh, process error and a Bernoulli observation error. So what we see is that for the process model, uh, there's four cases. Uh, first, uh, if we are alive at the first time point, uh, so the probability of being alive at this time point, uh, given that we were alive in the previous time point, is determined by our survival probability S. And S, you know, I'm assigning a T here to acknowledge that we might ultimately write a model down where that survival probability varies by time. Uh, by contrast, uh, the probability of being alive right now when we know you were dead in the past is zero. It's impossible uh, to come back to life. Uh, the probability of uh, being dead now, uh, given that you were alive in the past, is one minus that survival probability. And the probability of being dead now, given that you were dead last time, is 100%. Again, we don't have uh, uh, zombie individuals. So that's our process model. It's a, it's a Bernoulli model with a survival probability S and a, and a sample size of one for each individual. Uh, on the observation side, uh, we have um, a latent state X uh, that can be either zero or one, and then we have observations that could be either zero and one. Uh, so the probability of observing an individual when it was there is our detection probability P. The probability of observing an individual when it's not there is zero. The probability of not observing an individual when it's not there is 100%. And the probability of not observing an individual when it was there is one minus our detection probability P. So now we have two parameters that both might vary in time that we need to estimate. And so we need to be able to put priors on those. Um, and so, for example, if these were um, just single parameters, uh, something like a beta would be a very natural choice of a prior because it, these are parameters that are bound uh, between zero and one. They are probabilities. So we look at that that graphically. You know, we have um, again x of t evolving latently through time. We have the observations y. Now we have some survival probability that connects uh, the x's through time, and we have some detection probability that connects, connects the, each x with each y. So within an MCMC, uh, as within our previous state space model, we're going to update the state variable sequentially based on the previous x, the next x, and the current y. So those are the three things that go into estimating uh, the probability of latent x. Uh, noting that we do not need to update values if the state is known. So if we know with 100% probability that an individual has to be alive because um, you know it was it was alive, at, at that, you know we observe it to be alive or we observe it to be alive in the future. We don't need to um, update those states. We only need to update the states on the um, individuals we don't know whether they're alive or not. So if we put um, a beta prior on our survival and capture probabilities, and then we have a binomial, which is, you know, Bernoulli is just a special case of a binomial, uh, we can actually give sample uh, both the survival probabilities and the capture probabilities because we just have a beta binomial conjugacy. Uh, and this note to, you know, make sure that we don't double, double count the dead because you only die once. Uh, so, you know, once we infer that an individual is dead, we don't continue on to assess the probability of it staying dead. Uh, this framework is also relatively easy to extend. Uh, for example, the current model is assuming that our capture probability and survival probability are varying with time. That could either be assumed to be a common time invariant set of parameters for capture probability or survival, which is honestly the easiest place to start is to assume those parameters are constant. Um, you could also assume that they are hierarchical, so you might have a, a random effect on either your capture probability or survival probability. Uh, and then you might move from having a random effect to attempting to, under, to write down um, fixed effects that would try to explain the variability that we see 
in the survival probability or the capture probability. Uh, and this is a case where since these are probabilities uh, and this is a, ultimately a binomial data model, uh, the, the logit link is a very natural choice, same as it was for logistic regression. And any of the other link functions that you're using logistic regression are also very natural choices to be able to write models down describing the variability and capture probability or survival probability. So in this case, you might have survival probability uh, varying through time based on some set of covariates Z and some parameters beta, and then potentially some set of random effects. And it's also noting that there's no extra uh, epsilon on the end of this, like there is in a, in a linear model, uh, because we just have this Bernoulli survival probability. And that was actually true with our uh, logistic regression as well. We just had uh, you know, the, the case where we had fixed effects and, and random effects. Uh, we also talked about, back when we were talking about logistic models, that you can, in fact, extend uh, the logistic style models uh, to, instead of just being a logit to being a logit normal, if you do actually believe there's additional variability, which you wouldn't have to do that. So looking at this graphically, uh, we again have our observed y's and our latent x's, uh, and then focusing just on a single x, um, there's going to be you know, a set of uh, fixed effects beta and random effects x that might potentially uh, explain uh, the variability and survival probability from time to time. Uh, I don't know if it pops up. Yep, the, and there's uh, priors on the beta, uh, and then there's a parameter model on tau that explains the variability and the random effects, and, and priors on those on that tau. Uh, so that wraps up our discussion of, of mark recapture models.